Hi there, welcome to this build of a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now the quiver is a scaled down version of the iconic 1930s Quaker. And we're building this quiver from a great set of plans that we've downloaded for free from the Outer Zone website. Now in the last video we got the wings attached to the fuselage, we got the mounting dowels in the back and we got this front section here finished and ready to accept the wings so that they can be mounted nice and securely with elastic bands. Now the next stage in this build and we're almost getting to the end of the kind of the balsa construction side of things and we'll be moving on to fitting the electronics, the control surface, linkages and things like that. But the next stage of this build is to fit the tailplane and the fin and rudder assembly. Now we, we built the basic structure of these a few videos ago. But like I say, now we need to get round to fitting them. And the first thing we do though, before we fit them, is we need to create a nice, sta strong, stable platform on the back of the fuselage to accept them. And we need to clean these up, profile them, get the hinges done and work out actually how we're going to operate these elevators on the back and this, uh, this joint linkage if you like. Because the original uh, design as shown on the plans is uh, cables, push-pull cables from either side. But we'll have a closer look at the tail platform first and then I think we'll clean these up and, um, and get them ready to, uh, to start fitting. And if we look at the plans, there's a couple of, uh, or, or there's a, a drawing for a, a former, or a, yeah, I guess it's a, a former, to go on the back of the fuselage like that. So we've got one either side, and that brings the platform for the tailplane to the correct angle. Now there's no angles shown on the plan, uh, or specified, there's no angle of incidence or degrees or anything like that. So we need to try and get these as accurate as possible as they're shown on the plans to hopefully get this to the correct um, angle, uh, the correct incidence so that we get this flying nicely. So we're going to stick those on there and then I'm going to fill that in with a bit of, uh, with a bit of balsa, maybe get a bigger piece than this, but fill in this gap here with a piece of balsa so we've got a good, strong, stable platform for which we can eventually fix this. And we're going to peg it. We're going to have a couple of pegs on this somehow that will fit down into the, um, the base here. And we'll also need some kind of pegs coming up to attach the fin to. But we'll have a look at that in a bit. First things first, I'm going to get this platform constructed and uh, and then I'm going to go outside. It's a windy day, best day for sanding. And I'm gonna put a bull nose on the front of this. So I'm gonna round off the tips and I'm gonna put a slight taper on the elevator as well. And I think on the rudder, I'm gonna taper that a little bit. I don't wanna taper it too much because I don't want to weaken it. I, I need to put a ball nose on the front here. So I'll do the profiling, and then once we've got all that done, we'll come back and have a look at how we're going to do the linkages and how we're going to fit uh, them onto the fuselage. Right, I've now got that um, glued into place and that platform's ready to accept the tail plane. It'll need some work doing to it. It'll need to be sanded and we'll need to make sure right at the at kind of the end of the process probably to make sure that this is sitting on there nice and square with the wings it's not sort of crooked one side or the other but we'll get back to that in a little bit I'm just about to go outside and start doing the uh, profiling of this I might just plane this a little bit first with my uh, with my David plane I'll see how that goes but primarily I'm going to use a sanding stick but it just occurred to me I should just mention that when you're taking elevators down like this, it's worth putting a center line on just so that, or it doesn't need to be hugely accurate, but just a 
I'm not doing this very well actually in front of the camera, uh, but just a, a line down the centre like this as a, a kind of a reference so that we know where we are and, and that we take it down equally. We don't take too much off, off one side compared to the other. So well worth doing in my, in my mind and I've done that with the, uh, the rudder as well. I've just put a, a rough centre line down there, hopefully that shows up. So I'll get these profiled now and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the next stage. Right, well, I've now got both of these sanded up, the gross sanding done. It, of course, as I always say, it'll need a finishing sand. But you can see, hopefully, how I've just taken down that trailing edge of the, um, of the rudder by about 50%. I don't want to take it down too much and weaken it. And I've got the ball nose on here. And the same with this. I've taken down the elevators to about 50% and the ball nose and rounded off these tips. Now the next thing is to separate them and to get them hinged. So I'm just going to cut these down the centre and then I'll take them outside, give them a quick sand and then we'll have a look at getting them, uh, getting them hinged. So. I quite like doing them as, as one unit like this. I think you get quite a nice, uh, quite a nice shape, and quite a nice finish, particularly where you've got these laminated tips. And that needs to come off there as well. Right, I'll get these cleaned up and we'll put the hinges in the, uh, in the rudder and the fin. Right, well I've got the, uh, the, the fin and the rudder cleaned up and we're ready to put the hinges in. And what I've done is I've, I've got the, the hinges I'm using are these um, small Dubro hinges and they're really, really good. And I've marked on the, uh, the fin and the rudder where the hinges are, go, where we've got, are going, where we've got this extra balsa. And I've used this centering tool to put a center line down the center of the balsa so we know where we're going to put the hinge so we just move that up and down like that and that centers that little uh, scribe in the middle and then we can just use a pencil to uh, just to highlight that make it a bit more visible now these Dubro hinges are really small and thin so to cut the slot I've got a new scalpel blade very sharp and let me just put the cross on there there. Right, and I'm just going to cut this with the scalpel blade and I'm just going to do it very lightly to start with because we don't want to put too much pressure and slip and I find you get a better cut if you do it in a lot more strokes than trying to do it in just a couple. So we just keep working that. Obviously we're working quite close to our fingers with a very sharp plate which is uh, always a little bit concerning but if we take it steady and we don't force it we should be fine. Now I'm going to put this on the bench now. I've got this started. Just move the camera because I'm going to use the corner of the bench or the edge of the bench. And I'm just going to put this in now and just work my way in with that. And I'm going to put my finger on the back of the blade and just ease that along. And just check, yep, we're coming out the centre at the back, which is uh, always good. Now, that is possibly enough 
to get these hinges in but if we just slide it backwards and forwards that is quite tight so it might it might not go in just yet we might need to just work it a little bit more yeah that's a little bit a little bit tight still so we'll just work this backwards and forwards and just make that slot a little bit bigger there we go now that does go in but I might just work it again well that's okay actually so you can see there we've got that hinge now and what I will do if when I uh, come to fix these is I will cut off this excess here because there's no point in having that and you'll see it through the semi-transparent tissue and it will just it won't look nice so I will get the rest of these done and I will also uh, I've still got this to clean up and then I'll get the hinges in this as well right I've been cracking on with this now and I've got the hinges in the elevator and once I'd got this hinged I actually took off a little bit of balsa on the back of the elevator or on the, the front edge of this elevator so it would allow full movement just at 45 degree angle top and bottom just so we can get a, a lot of movement on that if not we'll find the corners binding and the same on this you can see now we've got lots of movement and uh, I've taken off a 45 degree sort of chamfer on down that edge now these hinges are lovely and free in the past I might have used mylar hinges but I, I prefer these because they're a lot looser a lot freer mylar hinges have a kind of a natural resistance to them that you have to get over and I'm wanting to have as light as possible servos on here or as as small as possible so the less resistance in the hinges the better now if we I, I've this joining piece, the elevator, I've just rounded that off a little bit and if we put that on the edge of the table we can see I've sanded a bit out of the, uh, the rudder there so that now that will fit on there nicely and we've got full elevator movement and we've got full rudder movement. The only thing that's restricting the rudder now is the actual elevator itself and you can see how that if I just turn this round into camera you can see how that works lovely but now we need to think about how we're going to attach this to the uh, to the fuselage now the tailplane I'm going to put on a piece of 316 on the underside of this central uh, spar or central uh, strut just a piece like about 40 mil about like that and that is going to slot into us into here I'm going to cut a slot in that plate that we put on the back of the fuselage and then this will positively just fit down into that so that will fit nice and snug and it's something that we can take off we can cover it we can glue the rudder on and then we can slot that back in place knowing that it's going to be in exactly the right orientation and everything not only for the servo linkages but also in relation to the wings now so that's how we're going to fit the tailplane to the fuselage to fit the rudder to the tail what we're going to do is I'm going to put some more 316 balsa I'm just going to put a piece on the uh, inside of the fin there just to thicken that up so that it's uh, uh, so it's uh, a lot stronger there and I will then put that in position on the uh, on the tailplane and I'm going to drill through two or three holes one two three something like that that will just allow this carbon fiber rod to slide through not only the piece on the bottom of the tailplane that's slotting into the, the fuselage but up and through into the uh, the fin and that will give that a really strong um, attachment and it, I think this carbon fiber is really really strong so I think that will be a great fitment so I'm going to get on and do that and then we'll come back and have a look once that's done 
Right, I've now got the, the tail plane located on the back of the fuselage and I've cut a slot in that uh, mounting plate. I've put a piece of balsa in it, 316, and I've lined the tail plane up with it, pinned it, checked that this is uh, the same distance from the tips of the fins to the tips of the wings on both sides, so we know that the tail plane is parallel to the main wing. So what we need to do now is just push out this piece of balsa and we can see here we've got the slot. Let me just tip that up so you can see. There we've got the slot there. And on the bottom of the tail plane, we've got that piece of 316 balsa, which we're going to use as a locating uh, peg or whatever. And that will just slot on now and we'll get it in exactly the same place. So before I move that now accidentally, I'm going to get that glued, get that CA'd. The fin, I've doubled this up now, put an extra piece of 316. So once I've got that glued on the tail plane, I'm going to line that up and I'm going to drill the holes for the, um, the carbon fibre dowels just to, to thread in, uh, to push in. I mean, I won't actually fix these together until I've got them both covered separately. And then I'll put the dowels in, push them together and, uh, and glue it. So I'll get this glued now and we'll get those dowels done. Right, well I think we're more or less there now. I've got the, the fin drilled through with a 2mm drill into the tail plane and I've got that pegged with three pieces of 2mm carbon fibre. And hopefully you can see that. Now I could have used steel but I think carbon fibre is <laughs> just as strong almost and will glue a lot better than steel so and also I checked and that is more or less well it looks spot on uh, square with the tail plane which is good but when I come to stick this finally to glue it finally after I've covered them individually I will of course check that I've got it square as I glue it now this should just slot into the back of the fuselage now and uh, locate exactly where it was when we set it up earlier. There we go. And that looks l lovely. Actually, I just want to push it down a little bit there. There we go. And that looks lovely. I'm really pleased with how that's, how that's looking. Now, the only final job we've got to do is to make sure that the tailplane itself is parallel and or horizontal but parallel to a center line going through the wings ignore the fuselage we need to make sure like I say it's um, it's horizontal in relation to the wings being horizontal so parallel to each other we don't want them sort of crooked so that's a really easy thing to do I think this just needs dipping down a little bit on this side and, but I'll measure it up and I will just sand the base here just until that sits perfectly, uh, perfectly level. But I'm just removing a little bit of balsa off this right hand side of the fuselage so that the, the tail plane does sit nice and level. And just to make sure that I'm getting that right, I've put some pencil marks on this side just so I can see that when I'm sanding it, I am actually just sanding that one side. But I think that might be right now because it doesn't need much off. Right, we've now got this tail plane nice and level on the back of the fuselage and it's looking brilliant. I'm so pleased with how this model is taking shape and looking and the beauty of what we've done today with this tail plane is that we can take it off quite easily and then we can put it back on in the knowledge that it's going back in exactly the same position so if we want we can uh, set up the servos we can then take it off we can cover it and we know that everything is going to be just right just where uh, we we planned it to be so that is brilliant and it is so exciting to see this taking shape now so anyway I'm going to draw this video to a close 
and I hope you've enjoyed it, found it useful and please come back and see how we get on in the next video continuing the build of this lovely quiver or mini Quaker. So thanks very much for watching.